Hello everyone, my name is Mirna and on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, we want to welcome you to Mindalia live streaming where thousands of people around the world gather to see the lectures and interviews organized by Mindalia TV. Today with us, again, Angel Ribot. He is a CEO consultant, TV host, international public speaker and president of the Wisdom for Kids Foundation. He's going to be interviewing Meredith Whitney. Meredith is a professional animal communicator psychic, medium, Reiki healer, teacher, and public speaker. Before going with them, we want to remind you that Mindalia TV is a nonprofit organization. Our only mission is just to share the level, the shared information that can raise the level of consciousness around the world, and you can help us. How? Just by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, leaving us a positive comment down below, or sharing this with someone that you know that can take advantage or benefit out of the content that we're sharing today. Also, we want to remind you that while we are live streaming, we have the active chat on the side of the screen. That is a great tool for you to get in contact and interact with Meredith, whom at the end of the conference will be answering the questions that you ask. Just please remember the format, the word question in caps, and the actual question that you want answered. Also, good news, Mindalia TV is broadcasting in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So if you know the languages and you want to see content there, or if you have something to say, feel free to contact us. We are going to be happy to have you with us. Without further delay, I am going to be leaving you with Angel and with Meredith. Angel, Meredith, the screen is yours. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mirna. It's a blessing to have here today with us, Meredith. Meredith. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. The first question I would like to ask you is, how can someone possibly gather so many blessings as you? When she was introducing you, I was just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> raising my, my eyebrows. So where do, you know, where do all those blessings come from? Those blessings um, come from, it comes natural for me, second nature. Although I have had to take, you know, many classes, read lots of books on psychic mediumship development and animal communication, um, and practice, practice, practice. When did you realize that you had, you know, this gift or these gifts? When I was about probably 12 or 13, I would get pictures in my head from my horse. And I didn't know what to do with the pictures, um, so I would dismiss it. And then I opened back up again um, and stepped out of the spiritual closet, probably in 2002, 2003. I started to hear voices in my head and see pictures on the wall and in my third eye. Um, so I went to a very, very dear friend of mine who is also a psychic, uh, astrologer in San Pedro, California. And I went to her and I said, this is what's happening to me and it's freaking me out. And she said, honey, you're, you're psychic. Embrace it and go and help animals and people. So that's what I've done for the last 15 years. You know, those voices that you were listening, what, what were they? They were uh, my spirit guides. I call them my spirit team, which are my spirit guides and my angels and spirits on the other side. Do and still, animals. <laughs> okay. Do you still hear them? Yes, I actually, it's called clairaudience. It's inner hearing. And then clairvoyance is inner seeing in your third eye. A few times I've seen spirit in the physical with my physical eyes. Wow. So when you talk to people, is it possible that you perceive things that other people don't perceive about them? Uh, yes. Sometimes I get uh, downloads of information. Um, I don't, I tend, when I'm out in public, I do not tune into people um, and start reading them because that's unethical. Um, but if somebody calls me and books a session, then yes, I tune in to them and uh, I get their permission 
to speak with their spirit guides and their higher self or their animals. And how, how did you find out that you could actually communicate with animals, Meredith? Well, because at the time in 2003, I had a, a pet sitting and dog walking business. And when I was walking the dogs, I would, you know, start hearing their conversation. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And they're like, wait, you can hear us? And I said, yeah. And uh, that's how it started. And then I had two dogs at home. I had a horse at the time that I got off the track and started training him. He's a thoroughbred. Um, he's been since been sold, but um, it was surprising to me that I could actually hear and speak with animals. And does that happen with any animal or only your animals? All animals. Wow. So I that means talk. that means that you can literally go to some friend's house yes. and, yes. and actually communicate with their pets. Yes. And get to know about the family speaking with the pets excuse me sorry to be a little bit uh, um, ironic here but it's it's um you know it's it's really a gift uh, that has to be used with a lot of caution right it does it comes with a lot of responsibility so what would you what would you say it's why do you think that you have been the recipient of those blessings i have been told by two different psychic mediums that I am fourth generation psychic medium. Uh, on my mom's side of the family, I do have a, a cousin that is also, she calls it ESP, but psychic, intuitive, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and how do you help people? I help people uh, with their animals because when I'm doing an animal communication, it's not all about the animal. It's about their humans too. And some people say, you know, I don't have the problem. They have, the pet has the problem. I said, no, the problem starts with the human because our animals can read our energy. They can read our thoughts. They know what you're thinking at all times. They know if somebody's going through a divorce, they know, sorry they know if you're cheating on your boyfriend or your husband or your wife or girlfriend um but not all not all my animal clients are out to like uh call their humans out on what they're doing bad or whatever um it's usually very positive and how do you know that they know how all do, those things because they how tell me they tell me oh. through pictures. They tell me I can hear it audibly in, in my inner, in my head. And I get feelings also, so. And it can be any animal? Any animal. I've talked to snakes. I've talked to lizards. I talked to a goldfish. Can I you talk to, to insects, for instance? Yes. Yes, I can. Is there, any, is there a limit on the size of the animal that you can actually no. communicate with? <laughs> Oh no. my God! I really? Talked, I talked to uh, Tilikon, the killer whale, when he was um, at Sea World. When he was, um, they kind of put him away. They isolated him after he was being bullied by the other killer whales, and um, he was very angry. And I would, he, I asked him what he needed, and he said, "I like it when people sing to me." So I would tune in and I would sing to him. So that was, that was a very sad, sad situation. But it is still very beautiful that you could actually help him. <laughs> Thank you. What a story. Do you think that animals can help humans much more than what they are doing today? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, horses are very... Excuse me, I'm wiping my brow because it's really hot here in Phoenix today. <laughs> it's okay. It's the same thing in Dallas. So uh, please okay. go ahead. So, Absolutely, Meredith, please. Uh, I have just, um, out of most horses and dolphins and whales, are probably the most intelligent above human beings. It's, 
it's incredible how intelligent they really are. They give messages on how to heal the earth and that we should all love one another and be kind to one another. Wow. Can, can we actually use animals to heal ourselves in some way? Yes. We can? Yes, we can. Cats are very healing. Um, sometimes when I'm not feeling so good, I have a, a tuxedo black and white cat named Oreo. And he will come and, and lay on me or lay next to me and he will help me heal. Wow. Do you, um, do you have yourself um, animals right now at home? Yes, I have a 11 month old healer Kelpie mix named Rue. And then I have my cat Oreo. Are they around? Oh yeah. Can, well, can you call them? Do you mind? Well, Rue is in her crate right now because, oh, okay. <laughs> because okay. I'm on the interview. She's laying nice and quiet. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's okay. You know, um, we've had stories of there's a lot of people that we interview or they make talks and they have actually, they have um, literally uh, animals at home and pets and, and they've been actually <laughs> present in the interview and they have been walking around and we've been, even had cases in which they have been part of the interview. So I'm sure that being so she, special with you, you know, that's why. She's pretty high energy. Mm -hmm. Rue is really high energy and mm -hmm. um, she just had dinner. So she's kind of taking taking a relaxation session right now <laughs> oh fair enough <laughs> fair enough um so you said that um animals know what's going on in our minds in our lives um, oh yeah um so that means that could i mean depending on it let's let's talk about conditions medical conditions that people can have does that mean that, for instance, there's an animal for every they know. Co condition, or they, they, any animal can help with any condition, or 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 they, they, did, yeah? How does that work? Excuse me for so the, sometimes. Um, let's say uh, I've had an one of my animal clients. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. Sure. Um, let's see. I've had a, a cat tell me that he had cancer. Um, but some of our animals can sniff out cancer and they can warn, they can tune in to me and say, Hey, Hey, my human, um, is sick. Can you, you know, they need to go to the doctor. But I, I can't just call up that human and say, hey, your animal tells me you are sick and you know, you know, you might want to go see a doctor and have it checked out. Um, but the cat, my cat client that actually had cancer, the minute I walked in the human's home, the cat met me at the door and immediately I heard, I have cancer, I have cancer, I have cancer. And I didn't tell the client right off the bat because I didn't want to freak her out. So I went home. And I called her, I emailed or called her, I can't remember. And I said, look, I said, I told you in your session, your cat needed to have a second opinion. And I gave her the name and number of a holistic veterinarian that also is an animal communicator uh, in LA. And she took her cat and she went and got an ultrasound and sure enough the cat had pancreatic cancer and because of that um because of that second diagnosis the cat lived another six months the cat was put on special medication and could live out another six months the message that you get from that excuse me that you get from the animals are they like the same kind of language that we use? Are, are they perceptions? What, what kind of communication is it? So the communication I get is telepathic. So I get words, pictures, feelings, and somehow it translates it into English because I've had clients that are, uh, have Scottish accents, have uh, Spanish accents. <laughs> 
uh, just like humans do. Uh, so that's how my brain translates it. It's all telepathic. So I can work from anywhere in the world with my computer and my phone and my gift. <laughs> Well, humans are, at the end of the day, we are uh, animals. Can you also read our minds the same way? Um, not, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know that's gonna freak some people out, but I don't go around tuning in and reading people's thoughts because if you think about it, people's thoughts tend, most people's thoughts tend to be more negative or just on the future or the past. Most people have to train to stay in the present moment. And animals are the most present species ever, I, in my opinion. <laughs> what do animals typically think about during the day? You, you mentioned a very important subject because actually you know, we have 60 to 70 humans, we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day, and you just said that animals are typically more present. How, how do they think? What do they think? What are those, their thoughts about? Well, my two, <laughs> my two, um, if I'm working here on the computer, mm -hmm. doing marketing or billing or whatever I'm doing with my business, Rue will come over and she'll just sit there and stare at me I'm like, okay, what do you want? And I, I get a picture of her either with a leash on or I actually hear, can we go for a walk? It's a very short sentence. And uh, if my cat is hungry, they stay in the present moment. They remind me to stay in the present moment. Like, hey, you're working too much, get off the computer, let's go for a walk or let's play. Wow. And is it the same as when you go to someone else's house? Do you perceive <laughs> that? Uh, sorry to, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to, I mean, you're, again, most, your, your gifts are so time, unique. that Most of the time I do need permission from the human, but occasionally uh, if we're just sitting around at a, if I'm just sitting around at a friend's house and I notice their dog walking around and staring and, I'll tune in and he'll say, hey, I need to go potty. Can tell my human to let me out. I need to go potty. You know, things like that. And if you see, for instance, a wasp and you are having a walk, you know, you've gone for a walk, can you actually tune into the wasp? Yes, I um, occasionally, a couple times at a few places I've lived at, um, I have had uh, a beehive and I had to talk to them and say, hey, if you don't move on, then I will have to call the bee exterminator and have you removed. And it probably means a lot of you are going to lose your lives. So a, a few of them left, but a lot of them stayed and they died. But yes, you can talk to you can talk to if you have a, a mouse problem or a rat problem you tell them that it's not okay to be in your house and that they need to move on. Wow, fantastic. Um, depending on the condition of the medical condition, do you think that we can choose between one animal or another that might be able to help us heal that particular condition? What has your experience been? I haven't really heard of animals like curing a medical condition. It's, it's not like that. Okay. Um, you still have to go to the doctor if you have cancer or um, whatnot. So, but they can help us with our, um, our emotional, our mental, and our physical, and our spiritual. They can uh, get you up out of your chair and get you to exercise. Do you think that um, when you pick a pet for your home, uh, you have to use much more than your brain? Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> you do, okay. Um, so, so the rest of the world that doesn't have your abilities or your gifts, how can they, we pick the best pet and really like 
you know, nail it. So I, I do offer a service and I've done this before for some people, mm -hmm. um, go help them pick out an animal that is the right fit for their family. Um, I did it for some very good friends of mine that live in Southern California. Um, they have, um, they had a son who they homeschool and he was, um, having some issues. Um, and we went, they brought me along to go pick out, they adopted uh, a little mixed terrier dog. And she's, that was, I think four years ago and she's still with them to this day. And she's been a blessing in disguise for them. Um, I asked the animal question, what lifestyle do they want? Because I might have a different lifestyle than they want or that they need. Um, some animals want a more active family. Some animals want more like an older couple that are calm and peaceful. And how, I mean, we that we don't have the same gifts that you have, how, how can we pick an animal, a pet, and make sure that we are picking the, we are not picking the wrong one. Let's put it this way. How so can most, we do it? Can we most, use like our intuition or what can we do? Yes, you can use your intuition or your a gut feeling. Most people pretty much know whether an animal feels right to them or not. But it's where people second guess their own intuition is when they get in trouble. So yeah, I am not special. Anybody can do what I do. They just have to be calm and be willing to sit on the floor and be quiet with their animal. Um, and then they can ask their animal a question. Like if they have a dog, they can ask them little short, simple sentences like, what is your favorite toy? And then you sit and be quiet. And if you get a picture, the first picture that pops into your head, that's it. Or whether you get a word. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I was thinking, obviously, if, if animals can see and understand everything of what's going on around them, that means that they have access to a lot of information. Have you, I mean, is, would it make sense that maybe at some, you know, in some instances, um, you would be able to serve, I don't know, law enforcement, for instance, or to help find, you know, people that has that this missing or what? I mean, these kind of things. Is that something that you could actually help people to do? Yes, I can, and I have in the past. Um, I work on lost animal cases. I've done. Uh, I haven't done any lost people cases yet, missing persons cases. Um, but I have found lost animals. And I've talked to uh, a police department's canine unit, a couple of their shepherds, a couple of their dogs for the Redondo Beach police. Um, why would you say, you know, sometimes, um, um, in the news, there's this, you know, there was an accident, the dog, you know, unfortunately uh, injured uh, a kid or, or an adult. Why do you think that those cases happen? Why do you think that happens? Is there, is, is there such thing uh, as like a violent breed of dogs? No. What do you think? <laughs> no. That's a really good question. The times that I have seen like stories on Facebook, um, and the dog gets euthanized because it's bitten a child. Animals will all, all, the dogs especially, will always give us a warning. Like they growl or they give us a, a look or they lay their ears back. Um, and people, they either don't want to listen or like if your child is, gets on the back of your dog that's lying on the floor, you have to tell the child that that's not okay. Dogs don't like that. Most dogs, 
that I've talked to don't like being grabbed around the neck and hugged. So parents with very young children or babies should A, number one, never leave that child alone with the dog. Never leave them unsupervised. And number two- Regardless of the dog? Regardless, regardless of, of the dog. It doesn't matter what breed the dog is and never ever let your, let your child pinch the dog or get on the dog and ride them like a horse and you think it's cute, it's not cute, it's hurting the dog and it's teaching your child um, to not to treat the animals not very well. Right. Why do animals get, you mentioned before there was a cat with cancer, why did, do they get cancer? Do they get cancer for the same, same reasons that humans do? Yes, um, sometimes an emotional issue turns into a physical issue, and sometimes they are a mirror for the human, and sometimes it's the type of food you're feeding your animal. There's a lot of preservatives and byproduct in uh, most, of, most of the pet foods that we feed our animals. There are higher, high end um, dog foods or cat foods. You just have to be careful and read the ingredients on the bag. How one can know if that particular food is something that your pet likes or not? They usually call me and ask me. <laughs> they do. <laughs> you know, one of the questions, one of the most often asked questions I get is, does my animal like their food? I'll either get a yes or a no, and then I get a recommendation from that animal's spirit guides. And you and don't I have to be present? Then you can do that? No, I can do it remotely. Oh. The okay. animal does not even have to be in the same room. I can talk to a horse that is in Texas, and their human is in California. I've done that before too, so. Well, in the beginning, in the introduction, as I said before, you, I mean, Mirna presented you to the Mindalia TV's audience with, you know, and, and she said so many blessings and gifts that you have. <laughs> Which is the one that you use most, the most, most, more often? Animal communication. Definitely? Definitely. That why, and why, why do you think is that? Excuse me, say it again. That and mediumship. Okay. I use that one mainly. Um, I connect better with animals because A, they don't judge you, and B, they're really easy to talk with. They're, they're oh, that's very really interesting. They're, they're very loving unconditionally. But can you ask them about you? Can I ask? Yes. And they will give you like an honest answer, whatever that is? Yes. Sometimes your animals know you better than you know yourself. Wow. That's fascinating. I think I would be, uh, we, we have to stop because we're over 30 minutes now. Oh. So we're going to, yeah, I mean, time flies. So <laughs> time let, me, flies. Let, me, let me go to the questions that we, we sure. got. And then if we have some more time, definitely I have a lot of questions. It's, it's fascinating to be speaking with you and the great work that you do for everybody. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let me let me go to the questions. Okay. So just one second. Let me. Okay. So how do? Oh, that's a great question. How do animals? <laughs> excuse me. How do animals perceive this world? Ah. <sighs> so the first thing I heard in my head was there's lots of war when there doesn't need to be war. Why can't humans be like us, animals, and just get along with each other? Love and kindness goes a long way. <laughs> Are you channeling now? Yes, I'm channeling now. Okay. In fact, I actually see a dolphin in my head right now. So yeah, whenever I look off in the distance or up or to the side, that means I'm focusing and channeling. Okay, perfect. Next question. 
what do they think about us? <laughs> Sometimes uh, I've actually heard animals that think humans are pretty stupid. They literally said humans are stupid. Like for instance, why do we wear cloth clothing? Why can't we go around with no clothes like they do <laughs> without clothes? Well, that's a good question because sometimes, you know, the owners <laughs> actually, you know, Put dress. Clothes. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. what do they think? How do they feel? Have you ever asked a, a pet that is wearing clothes? How does he or she feel? feel? They think most of the time, um, they feel embarrassed. They think it's stupid. They don't understand why humans have to put clothes on their pets. They said because, <laughs> I just heard, because we have hair to keep us warm. They don't need to put extra clothes on us. We have built-in clothing. <laughs> Excellent, good. So let's go to the next one. How about plants? Can you hear or sense them? Plants? Yeah. Yes. Sometimes I can, like trees and flowers. Um, every time I water, I have a, a hanging plant right outside my window. And every time I go and put, I water it, it says, thank you. Like, wow. I actually hear the words, thank you. They have feelings, too, just like animals and just like humans. So it. Sorry, go ahead. Any living being has feelings. I know that because I talk to them every day. I talk to animals. I talk to fish. Um, and anybody who, who doesn't think they have feelings, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> you, you talked before about... Excuse me. No, let's go to the question. I'm sorry. You know, it's so fascinating. <laughs> you know, excuse me. I was going to ask you a follow-up question. I'll do it later. So uh, there's this, this question comes from someone in, uh, called Lupita Garcia, who's sharing the name with us. So sometimes my dog is barking in the backyard and looking something I can't see. Can dogs see spirits? Thanks. That's a really good question. So yes, animals can see, can and hear can see and hear spirits. Just like children at a young age, like babies, they'll look up in a corner of the room. And because uh, I can speak to nonverbal humans too, uh, that are autistic nonverbal, or I can speak with babies telepathically, just like I do the animals. So yes, animals, can and do see spirits. Excellent. Next question. Where do they go after death? Um, they go to, as we call it, heaven or the other side. Just like there's life, there's life after life. Um, we go, we shed these bodies, the physical body, we're still alive, we're not really dead, on the other side. And it can be right beside us. It's people up above them in heaven, but it's really right beside you. The veil, the veil is uh, very thin. So. Do they reincarnate? I believe in reincarnation. Um, if anybody's seen the movie uh, A Dog's Purpose, where the same soul comes and returns several times in several different bodies of dogs. Um, so yeah, I believe in reincarnation. It's, it's an, all an individual belief. Mm -hmm. Do you think then that animals, that animals reincarnate? Yes, animals do reincarnate. Um, I'm trying to think of a, <laughs> a story for that one. Uh, I don't have one. <laughs> but I do believe that animals and humans do reincarnate. I have been told I have, um, my last name is Whitney. So I was told in a past life that I have been 
in this Whitney family before, uh, back in the 1800s. So. Good. Next question. Um, you said you talked to their spirit guides. They all have spirit guides? Yes. I do believe, just like humans, every human on this planet has one main spirit guide. They have angels. They have their team of angels and spirit guides. I have different spirit guides for different aspects of my life. Like I have spirit guides that guide me in my business. Um, I have a spirit guide that guides me on friendships and relationships. Um, so everybody, even animals, have their own spirit guides and their own angels with them. And do animals communicate to their guides? Yes. Um, my old Australian Shepherd that I lost in 2015, her name was McKenna, and she helps me from the other side. Um, she actually told me that when she crossed over that she met her angels and her spirit guides. Wow. Next question comes from someone called uh, Black Onyx in Canada. Mm -hmm. I had to make one of the hardest decisions ever made by a pet owner. My cat was about 18 years and I, suddenly she got very sick. She couldn't even walk. I had to put her down. I still feel very guilty, even though it's been three years. Do they forgive? Yes. And I'm so sorry for your loss. They do. They forgive us easier than we forgive ourselves. Us humans are very hard on ourselves and we tend to hold on to guilt for a long, long time. Um, but it's better to, to let that guilt go. And anger, um, anger and guilt is like hot coal in your hand and the sooner you let it go the better that you will be it's not good to hang on to guilt and anger just love and forgiveness good next one how is it to talk with a baby <laughs> i've had i think a couple of like three instances where i got to talk to a baby that was that was non-verbal not talking yet. And it's pretty much like you and I talk to each other, except they told me like, hey, can you tell my mom I don't like that formula that she's feeding me? Or, hey, I need a diaper change now. Um, just different things um, about their likes and dislikes, uh, the foods they like, the foods they don't like. Um, I had, one instance where they didn't like the mom like yelling at them <laughs> so good um i've heard next question i've heard some animals are actually from another planet uh for example dolphins what do you think about that okay so personally i've never heard of animals being from another planet um, I know we originate, humans originate, um, originated from different planets. Lifetime. Okay, so <laughs> I'm getting clarification on that from a dolphin. A dolphin, I'm seeing a dolphin in my head and they're shaking their head up and down, yes. Yes, we come from another planet, but that was long ago. Now we're in the ocean. <laughs> Interesting. Good. That is interesting. <laughs> awesome. I, I actually heard, now that, that this um, member of the audience uh, uh, of my reality is asking that question, I have to say, one time I read a story about octopus. Octopus coming from actually another, another planet. So, um, wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm very, very, very documented, extremely documented, because apparently oh, I'm, open, I'm open to it. Um, I do believe in extraterrestrials and there are UFOs and there is a planet, whether people want to believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, 
Next question. Some people decide to buy pets when they have some sort of uh, medical condition at home. Will you do that? Well, will I do the training? Like, like recommend, recommend buying a pet in order oh. to help someone that yes, has I, a condition. Yes, I can do that, but um, the, the animal has to agree with the conditions. Animals, um, animals, I believe, uh, should have a choice too. Like when you go and adopt a, a dog from a, an animal shelter, most people just go and pick out a dog and they bring it home. Well, how do you know that the animal even wants to be with your family? Maybe they don't want to be with your family. They like you enough, but what if they don't like kids and you have little children running around that make the dog nervous? Animals should have a choice um, whether they want to go home or be a, a medical dog or not. So in this particular case, we should ask the animal and see the reaction and then take yes. it from there? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Next question. Um, how can I understand my dog better so I can be respectful and loving? So I do teach animal communication classes to help people talk with their own animals so that they have a better connection and understanding with that animal. Um, should we talk to them in our minds or with our human voice? You can do, you can talk to them telepathically, mind to mind, heart to heart connection, or you can speak to them out loud. They, animals understand when you're speaking with them, you're creating a subconscious picture in your mind already. And some people are good senders and some people are not. Some people are good receivers and some people are not. It takes practice. So if you are sending a, a picture to your dog, let's say you want to go for a walk, and you send a picture of the leash and you show them a picture of you walking the dog down the street and it just sits there like, didn't get it, didn't get it. Well, then you have to know how and to practice sending telepathic pictures to your dog or your cat or horse. <laughs> okay. Next question. Um... My dog keeps scratching and scratching. I've checked her and she doesn't seem to have fleas or ticks. How to know what is bothering her? So immediately when you said, asked that question, I got a food allergy. And then I also picked up on an environmental allergy to maybe grass um, or because grass sometimes has chemicals on it and when the dog goes outside and walks on the grass and then they come back inside, they bring those chemicals with them on the bottom of their feet. So I picked up immediately that the dog um, has environmental aller allergies. You can always go and have your dog tested at a veterinarian. They have a allergy test to find out what your animals allergic to okay next question should we take our dog with us on vacation or should we leave it in a <laughs> dog hotel so let's see that's a good question <sighs> most animals most dogs they're part of your family so they want to go on vacation with you they don't want to sit in the kennel. They don't want to sit at home. They want to be included in your family. So most dogs I have talked with as clients, they like going with their families on vacation. Okay. Okay. Good. 
For how long is it okay to leave them by themselves at home? Hmm, that's a pretty wide open question. Um, like if you're going on vacation or just out to the grocery store? Uh, <laughs> it wasn't very I guess clear. It's, yeah, I guess it's general, you know, like during the day or I don't know. Like if you leave to go to the, uh, to the grocery store, let's say, you can leave your dog at home and you can tell your animal, cat, dog, whatever, that you can actually say, explain to them, I'm going to the grocery store, but I will be back. And then you show a picture of a clock, an old fashioned clock, and you show a picture like a two o'clock or three o'clock, that is when I'm going to be home. But if you're going on vacation and the dog is staying home, then you let the dog know where you're going. Like we're going on a short vacation. We will be gone three sunrises and two sunsets. Because if you just leave and you don't tell your animal where you're going or when you're gonna be back, think about how that animal feels. Like, oh my God, did they abandon me? They're, they're not coming back? Are they coming back? When are they coming back? Where did they go? So try and treat your animals like you would if you had children. And I know that seems pretty silly, but your animals have feelings just like your children have feelings. They want to know where you're going. They want to know when you're going to be back. Makes sense. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. Do they get along dogs and cats at home? My puppy and my cat get along great. <laughs> Most animals, if you introduce them, if you introduce them, like let's say you have an older dog and you want to get a cat, I highly recommend you get a kitten. Um, because it's it makes it easier on the, the older dog um, and it makes it easier so but I have heard of people having dogs and they get an adult cat or they have a adult cat and they get an adult dog listen animal species find ways to get along easier than us humans we could learn a thing or two from the animals. Okay, great. Next one. Do they like to sleep in the doggy bed or with the humans? Depends on the, the dog. Okay. <laughs> um, I would actually have to do a session with your dog to find out. <laughs> some okay. dogs like sleeping in their own bed and some dogs like sleeping in their human's bed. Okay, fair enough. This question comes from me, uh, Meredith. Here in Texas, uh, as you know, because you actually yeah. live pretty close North Texas, there's a lot of wildcats. Oh, and, yes. And some of my neighbors, for instance, they are afraid of leaving their, their, their dogs in the backyard because of the wildcats. Do you think this is a, a, like a proper fear to have? Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, when I lived in McKinney, Texas, about 11 months ago, <laughs> um, I had my cat, Oreo, um, and I would let him out during the day, and I would bring him in at night. But I highly, highly recommend those of you who live in neighborhoods in Texas, in Arizona, to never, ever leave your dogs outside by themselves. There's also owls that can pick up small dogs like at the snap of a finger it happens that quick so um when i moved here to arizona my cat became an indoor cat <laughs> and he's adjusted he doesn't really like it but it's the the world that we live in it's the neighborhoods that we live in um when i lived in texas i saw coyotes trotting up the middle of my street in the middle of the day. Um, but I highly recommend, I mean, bigger dogs, even bigger dogs that are left in the backyard by themselves for any length of time can and will get attacked. Bobcats, 
they can climb an eight foot fence, no problem. And they're, they're very, they're very bold. They can do it in the middle of the day. So. Okay, excellent. I know what to tell my neighbors now. Um, <laughs> I mean, and that, that happens for sure in many of the other places in, in the US for sure. And in the places where people are watching us today. Next question, do they suffer when they are removed from their litter? So I have found um, they don't suffer. Um, and I have found, I mean, they get over it, sure. But um, I think the, the mother dog, the mother animal uh, feels sad. Um, but, you know, and I also feel that like mother dogs or mother cats, they will recognize their babies if they are reunited with them even a year later. But yeah, mother dogs, mother cats, mother horses, um, and especially elephants, they do grieve. They just like us humans mm -hmm. so okay thank you next question is there an animal around that would want to say something to us humans watching this video oh my god that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one that's a very good one um, hmm let me see if i can so i'm still seeing the, the dolphin in my head <laughs> So the same message I got before from the dolphin, it's better for us humans to be loving and kind to one another. Learn to get along. That's the same message I keep hearing over and over, especially right now in the United States when all the turmoil is going on. Good. Excellent. Well, that was the end of... Uh of uh, of the questions um it's fascinating really i think that you have uh, enchanted all our audience today thank you very <laughs> much it was uh, it was great being on your show oh thank you thank you very much would you please remind us of where can we find meredith where how you can find me on the internet you can find me on facebook and my uh my website is www.meredith Whitney.com, M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H-W-H-I-T-N-E-Y.com. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. So, um, well, I mean, thank you very much. It's been a blessing to have you. I've had a lot of fun. I'm sure that our <laughs> audience has had fun too, because as you know, people love pets, love animals, and they respect them very much. And we all live together. And we feel really, really attached. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing so much of your wisdom. It's been a real pleasure to have us with us. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And again, to all Mindalia TV's audience tonight, I would like to say this is again Angel Rebo uh, with Mindalia TV. Thank you for being here with us tonight and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>